What are some very comforting facts? You can talk to your pet rabbit by quickly pushing your lips downwards and upwards as if you were trying to look up your nose in a mirror. Do it quickly in your chatting. It mimics the nose movements they make and you can see them wiggle their noses faster out of interest. Copy their rhythm too and watch them talk back. Also, stomping your foot like they do as well as turning your back on them when annoyed is understood too. If they have chewed something they shouldn't have, you can stomp one foot and turn around with your arms folded. Have a look over your shoulder to make sure they see you. They should come to check on you and if they don't stomp and make sure they see your back is turned. Eventually they get it and come over to make sure you're okay. Then let the nose waggling commence. You can expect them to do the same to you as well, like when you clean their enclosure. The vast majority of people with a first-time seizure will never have another seizure again and will not need lifelong anti-seizure medication. Everybody gets one freebie. The North Pacific humpback whale population is estimated to be 15x greater than it was 60 years ago. A middle or even low-income people in developed countries are living a much more comfortable life than the richest people centuries or even millennia ago, in large part, thanks to modern medicine making death from a mere infection no longer a near-guaranteed death. I am dirt poor but my ancestors not to mention plenty of people alive today would be amazed at the luxuries I have. Clean running water whenever I want, even to bathe in. Indoor plumbing. Clean clothing in mere hours instead of days of backbreaking work. Food available year-round and fresh veg and fruit out of season. Nurse here. If you're having a general anesthetic for a routine operation, and worried about dying while under, please be aware there are about 7 different levels of stuff we can do to bring you back. So if the thing we normally do doesn't work, we've got plan B, then we've got plan C, D, E, F, G and H. And we rarely need to even go to plan C, let alone the rest, it's ridiculously rare for you to never wake up from a routine op, of course it happens occasionally, but for every case you've heard about it happening, there's thousands of identical operations where it didn't. I've been qualified 15 years and it's literally never happened anywhere I've worked. Gray's anatomy leads me to believe there's about a one-third chance I'll die in surgery lol. All you gotta do is push an epi, bro. That's all they do. But what about secretly being awake but paralyzed and unable to scream? I came out of anesthesia early and started throwing, probably pretty weak, punches. They had to restrain me. I thought it was part of the awful dream I was having until I came back for a second surgery a week or two later and the nurse was like, oh I remember yo. I once found a ladybug in my room in the middle of winter. I tried to look up if I could feed it somehow, and found countless other people asking the same question. The world is full of people who have compassion enough to feed a lone bug in the winter. This happened to us. We had two of them. We kept them in a little bug hotel for a few weeks. We sliced grapes and picked up some flowers, leaves, sticks, etc. for them. They did fine. My two little girls loved their pet ladybugs and were happy to release them once it warmed up a bit. This reminds me of a post I saw about someone googling where do birds go when it rains? and them feeling very comforted by the number of Google hits it got, knowing so many people are out there just worried about little birds getting wet, and hoping that they are okay. Crows will let other crows know if you're a good person. Feeding a crow in your backyard can quickly become many crows over time since the rumor spreads. And nearby crows in your area will know you as one they like. They can also be known to be protective of you and even bring you gifts. Suffice to say, Crows are one of the most intelligent creatures on the planet and they are truly underrated. Saw a documentary about a guy who fed the crows who visited his backyard. The crows actually befriended the guy's pet cat and the cat enjoyed playing with the crows. One day the cat, who spent part of every day outside, did not come home. Later the guy discovered it had been attacked, probably by a coyote, and had been killed. Several days later the crows found the cat's collar and brought it to the guy, leaving it in the backyard bird bath where they had often left little gifts, a toy car, a child's barrette, etc., for the guy. He wept telling that story, and I wept hearing it. I thought you were going to say they killed the coyote out of revenge and brought it to the owner. I like to think that the crows killed the coyote responsible for killing their friend and brought back the collar as if to say he or she has been avenged. In other words, the coyote was murdered.
There is a group of bikers called Bikers Against Child Abuse who support child abuse victims in court by looking tough and giving the kids confidence to testify against their abusers it's actually an international group. My town had a tragic tornado that killed hundreds. There was an insane group who came to basically tell the town we deserve the death toll. Bikers rode around and around the group to drown out their noise. I'll forever respect a good group of bikers. They'll also act as security outside a child's house leading up to the trial. I recall reading that in an article about Baca. ETA, this is the article I was recalling, https colon slash slash www.goalcast.com slash bikers against child abuse join forces to help kids face their abusers slash. The group in my city does rape cases too. You call them or reach out on their Facebook page. They'll always send someone or look around for someone to go with you. They couldn't send a biker for me but a couple grandmas came for them. They didn't look super tough but they were wearing the biker gear. Those grandmas got me through that hell of a trial and I was 18 at that time. Being a little kid, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Um, biker grannies, best thing ever. I love how most of these answers are about animals. Parrots specifically cockatiels, will raise their wings when they see someone slash thing they love. When looking from behind, their raised wings resemble a heart. In 1987 they captured all of the 27 California condors in an area in California, and proceeded to breed them in order to bring back the species. They released most of them later, and now, roughly 127 are flying free into the state of California. Not the biggest improvement, but it's something. Jupiter has been protecting Earth from almost every stray asteroid strike coming in from out of the solar system since the planets first formed. Zebras rest with their heads on each other's backs so they can literally watch their zebra buddy's back. Plus it looks like a zebra hug. The ozone layer is slowly repairing itself. This was the most comforting out of all holy shit. Let me make it even more comforting. It's not just magically repairing itself on its own, it's repairing itself because humanity came together and worked to fix the problem. If you quit smoking by age 40, your life expectancy is the same as a non-smoker. Also, it's never too late to quit. I smoked a pack a day for 10 years. Been on a vape for a year, and the next step is weaning off of it. This is comforting I might not have totally irreparably fucked myself up. Even the difference with how I feel vaping versus smoking has been nuts. Cows have best friends. They also really enjoy music. Remember the hole in the ozone layer over the South Pole we were told about growing up? Thanks to a ban on CFCs and other ozone-depleting aerosols, that hole is nearly gone and the ozone layer has almost completely replenished to previous levels. On April 13, 2029 an asteroid Apophis, with the radius of 606.96, 370 meters, will skim the surface of Earth at around 19,600 miles. It will be visible by the naked eye. It's a comforting fact as it's been studied extensively and will not impact Earth that day. Nobody pays all that much attention to you. Everyone is the main character in their story and thinks you're just another supporting role or an NPC. I find this very freeing. B. Then Sayud. Want. To. Meet. Humans can hear each other smile through the phone through differentiating vocal intonation between smiles and non-smiles. https colon slash slash www.npr.org slash template slash story slash story dot php Story it equals 1825513 https colon slash slash hyken.com slash customer experience 2 slash guest blog smile customers phone slash My older brother, when introducing me to his music as a kid, used to point this out when the singer was smiling. I always thought this was such a special little thing not many people think about. There is a type of mold growing on slash around the elephant's foot in Chernobyl. This mold eats radiation and the radioactivity of the elephant's foot has decreased drastically since the mold started growing there. Ike, it's just comforting to me that the planet can heal no matter how bad the scar we left. There was a TV series in the 2000s called Life After People. That's where they got a lot of scientists, engineers, 
etc. to speculate on what would happen to the earth if the human population suddenly vanished. It was pretty fascinating that the earth will basically, very slowly, undo everything we've done. It's not going to help us regarding climate change or anything like that. Because the point is that the earth can heal itself if given the chance. I haven't watched it since it came out, but I think about stuff from that show almost every day. Switzerland has implemented a scheme time bank, which is an old age assistance program, under which, people can volunteer to look after the elderly who require assistance, and then, the number of hours they spend with or caring for seniors gets deposited in their individual social security account. Eventually, when the volunteer reaches that old age when he or she requires support, this time bank can help them by providing time-based services which include consultations, babysitting, hairdressing, gardening, tutoring, or any other time-consuming job in addition to being looked after by a volunteer as well. About 34 countries are trying to apply this scheme. Very wholesome and humane. I live in Switzerland and that's the first time I'm ever hearing about this. This past year there has been a massive breakthrough on SIDS research. Meaning in the future we may be able to detect SIDS in infants and possibly avoid as many infant deaths. Edit. Oh wow. My first gold. If you want to fund research for SIDS and support for grieving families here are some resources you can donate to. The First Candle Foundation. Damien's Legacy. The Sleep Health Foundation. Bereaved Parents USA. The Iris Foundation. HTTPS colon slash slash www.biospace.com slash article slash researchers answer how and why infants die from SIDS slash. Your pets will forgive you if you accidentally step on them. Can confirm. My dog has even moved past the forgiveness stage and now actively seeks being stepped on by standing behind everyone. Probably because of the human apologizing attention the dog gets after being stepped on. Almost immediately if you give them treats. We have something called insurance payments for our dog. I trained her to tolerate aggressive disruptions in preparation for our toddler. He's at the age where he can get really excited and hug her aggressively while she is sleeping, so once he's let her go, she walks over to the desk we keep her treats on. We call it making a claim. It works for accidental steps too. If we step on her tail or something she does the same thing. Edit, for those of you wondering how I trained this, ever since I got her as a puppy, I would wait until she was lying relaxed and I would go up and rustle her head and ears really aggressively with smiles and good girl etc. Then once the rustle session was up I would give her a treat at the desk. Edit 2, here she is enjoying herself, moments before toddler disaster here she is with her favorite bunny. Gotta give the full insurance experience though. Sorry, one of your paws was just one inch outside of an approved sleep zone. Insurance claim denied. I see you're making a claim for an accidental tail step, is that right? Hmm, unfortunately that isn't covered under the pause for pause no fault plan. If you want coverage for any accidental tail steps, belly kicks or head bumps, you would have to opt for the full snoot to tail coverage plan. Whoa, that's genius. Could you elaborate on how you train that behavior? Petting animals lowers cortisol. My bird is happy now. My city has a no-kill shelter, the animals have nice beds, and get walks. People come and read to them. The cats are all together in a big area with toys and scratching post, people come to pet them. Cheetahs are very shy animals. So some zoos give them support dogs like those for humans. It's the cutest thing ever. The bigger reason for this is that cheetah's vision likes to hyperfocus. In a crowd like ones at the zoo, they would get anxious looking at each individual and would try to analyze each person, which can be very stressful for them. Dogs are very good at reading groups and crowds. They pair a dog with the cheetah to rely on emotionally. If the dog is calm, the cheetah will trust them that there's nothing to worry about from those crowds. How zoo prevent the cheetah from killing the dog? They're typically introduced at a very young age and imprint on each other. Cheetahs are also not naturally driven to kill dogs as prey. A cheetah could kill a dog, but typically a cheetah would never hunt a dog in the wild. If it was in its territory, or if a dog appeared hurt and by itself, a cheetah might go for an opportunistic kill, but those are special circumstances. The most likely situation you'd see in the wild would be if they were hunting the same prey and they fought over a kill. Cheetahs are also the calmest and probably most friendly among the big cats. 
This is probably due to their hunting style and build. Their pursuit predators, and lack sufficient amount of muscle and raw strength when compared to other big cats, which are ambush predators. Source, https colon slash slash u2.b slash axpos 2 sf 0 e If you turn your back to a cheetah, you most likely won't get murdered. Probably not the same with other big cats. What if you turn your back and then start running? Not sure, but I doubt they'd pursue. Humans evolved alongside cheetahs, so they probably have some sort of idea of how humans work. As in, they know how we lack meat compared to other animals and probably are not worth hunting. They're also pretty fragile, so a human is an even more risky target to them than to other large cats. Cheetah aren't actually classified as big cats, they're cats that are big but not big cats. Because they can purr instead of roar. I've gotten to stand right next to one that was mellow and purring. Such an amazing sound, but also one that stirred something deep in my lizard brain that said, I could be food. Most seahorses are monogamous and mate for life. Young seahorses actually go on dates with their prospective partner before settling and starting to procreate. They can also be seen swimming in pairs with their tails linked together. And the puffer fish creates a work of art for his prospective love. One of the most extraordinary things. Have you ever been underwater and looked up through the rippling water surface at the sun? That work of art looks a lot like the sun does from that angle. I wonder if this is a symbolic representation of that experience. A puffer fish's picture of the sun, if you will. Could you imagine? A seahorse seeing another seahorse? And then making out work. Spider-Man. There's a place in Japan called Capybara Land where you can hang out with capybaras and see them chilling in hot springs. Capybara Land is actually close to going out of business due to less tourism in COVID times, they're desperately seeking donations irk. They should just make a YouTube reality show about the capybaras. Just hidden cameras everywhere just watch an M do capybara shit with some light narration. People would watch that and donate. I will put myself in severe department for them. Where do I donate? Edit. Spelling. I don't care enough to fix it, though. A rabbit island, a cat island, and now a capybara island? What's with Japan and the island known for a lot of one animal thing? There's also Nara Park, which is full of the most adorable, beautiful, bloodthirsty cute little deer on the planet. Yeah, they are cute, but they'll take a chunk out of you if you don't hand the fucking crackers over right now you little punk. Feed me or get out of my park. They will say please first though, so there's that. I've had the chance to hang out with capybaras. They're so chill even though they look highly distrusting. Here's a lame fact, there are probably thousands of people right now that are appreciative of you for asking this question, and even more so for those of you who are answering genuinely. I know I'm one of them. Can we make this a regular thing please? I feel like we need it. Sometimes dogs in movies have to have CGI tails because they keep wagging their tails. They are just so happy to be there. I heard that in the movie Cujo, the actor dogs, more than one, I heard, had to have their tail wagging edited out because Doggy was being a good boy. And the dogs had to be replaced by either Rottweilers or costumed humans, I forget for the really violent scenes because that level of violence was just beyond the St. Bernard's capabilities. Sort of happens in the movie Oliver. The dog playing Bullseye adored the actor playing Bill Sykes so much that he would wag his tail, even during a scene when he was supposed to be barking at him. Given that CGI wasn't a thing back then, they tied the dog's tail to his leg. You can sort of see it in some places. A person born in the world today is less likely to die violently than at any other point in human history. And each year it gets better, never perfect, just better. India's tiger population grew from 1,411 in 2006 to 2,967 tigers as per the 2018 census. Based on the best available information, tiger populations are stable or increasing in India, Nepal, Bhutan, Russia, and China but much more work is needed to protect this species if we are to secure its future in the wild. It's most likely a higher number once you consider that this only counts the tigers that decided to respond to the census. The count is also much higher due to the number of census takers who were eaten. 
You know how dogs get down in front with their butt in the air when it's play time? That's called a play bow and it's a common signal for play in the animal kingdom. A guy once watched as a bear wandered up to his sled dogs and, after the animals investigated one another, they all kind of did the play bow and proceeded to romp around the area having a fucking blast. They'd repeat the motion occasionally to confirm with each other that yes, they were still playing, and in the case of the bear, to signal to these new friends that mauling was not in the plans for today. The human stayed away and watched from afar because one, he was surprised the bear did not instinctually murderize the dogs, and two, he didn't want to be injured if he disrupted play time himself to rescue them. If you like the video, hit that subscribe button for more content. I post every day and I'll see you next time with more stories.